far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a podcaster. Really? Welcome to the Godfather, Godfather Minute. Minute. I'm Alex Robinson. And I'm your co-host, Andy Robinson. And today we are talking about Minute 13. 13. Lucky 13 of the movie The Godfather. Alex, e minuto numero 13. Oh boy, it's getting long now. It is. Uh, getting to those teens and there's no e looking numero? back. A uh, e minuto. E minuto. Numero. Numero. Tredici. 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 Excellent. You got it. Thank you. Grazie. What does that mean? That means. I've learned that. Uh, I've just learned Italian. Oh, right. That's what people say when they just learned Italian. They say, they say, grazie. I do want to point out that we did not say it last episode. We didn't, we skipped 12. So I, I do want to go back. Is it okay if we say that? Oh, you mean the in Italian? Yes. Okay, sure. The go last ahead. one was dodici. 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 Say it with me, Alex. Dodici. Dodici. You got it. So now the listener can edit this, you saying that, and put it into the last episode. Exactly. So, okay. So do you guys get to participate at home. Yeah. We're going to crowdsource this whole thing. Yeah, totally. <laughs> if we all pull together as a team. Anyway, uh, we're discussing minute 13 of The Godfather. And so can I... Uh, Oh, sorry. Point out, do a little uh, uh, shout out to a friend of ours since we're talking about the Italian numbers. Sure. Okay. So I've got a friend who speaks Italian who has been consulting me on how to say these numbers correctly. And way back in episode five, he recorded it for me. And so I'd like to play that now. A minuto numero cinque. A minuto numero cinque. So that's my friend Pete Carucci saying it is minute number five. So, not, not this is minute number five. It is minute number five. Uh, it, it can be really the same. Okay. It can be yeah, either one. Yeah. Same thing. So thank you, Peter Carucci. I appreciate yeah. that. I like the little addition of the bird behind him. It makes it sound like he's on the <laughs> like a Sicilian uh, you know, plane somewhere. Yeah, I think he's at the wedding right now. <laughs> at that wedding, in that wedding scene. Monday, Tuesday, yeah. Wednesday. <laughs> He's waiting online outside the Don's office oh, to yeah. ask for a favor. <laughs> uh, oh, anyway, I was going to say, we'll get to, the, I was going to ask if that godfather had to do things when his daughter got married, but I don't really think he was a godfather. He was I don't think, uh, yeah. he might be. We'll have to have him on as a guest too. So this minute, minute numero deci do. Tre- <laughs> 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 minute tre DJ. You got it. Tredice. It means three and oh, ten. Oh, I'm sorry. Tredici. 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 <laughs> uh, it starts off with another guy, uh, Nazarone. Nazarene. Nazarene? Does he call him that? In the th- yeah. Yeah. Oh. He says Nazarene. Oh. And then the last one, he says, Nazarene, my friend, what oh, can yeah, I do right. for you? You are correct. My transcription was an error. Yeah. So anyway, he's uh, explaining how uh, they want to send Enzo, his... Um, a former POW back to Italy now that the mm-hmm. war is over and his daughter, well, she's kind of got a soft spot for old Enzo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so uh, what can I do for you, my friend? <laughs> you want your daughter or you want him to stay in the country? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's, I, I learned something when I, when I figured this out because apparently during world war two, when Italians were taken as prisoners of war, they were brought to America mm-hmm. and made to work. Not just Italians, I, Germans too. I wasn't even aware of that. Yeah. What? What? How could they do that? <laughs> were they were they like slaves? Did they? Well, they were like put in like prisoner of war camps here in America. Yeah, here in America. I didn't even know that. Yeah, they were sh- they were transported from Europe to America and put in POW camps here. Yeah, I am just an ignorant sob. Well, I guess the ships that would would go to Europe and drop off supplies and would bring uh, back indentured bring, servants. Uh, yeah, wow. So, but apparently they were put to work in private people's businesses. Uh, I they they did have some interaction with like the local community and hmm. stuff. There are yeah, there are stories about like. People forming like relationships with the people, yeah. And so I mean, uh, I mean, Enzo yeah. Nazarene's the Enzo is apparently interacting with the community. If you know what I mean, you know. See, this guy seems. I would not want my daughter being. No offense, going with a prisoner. 
of any kind. Really? It's just, it just seems like... It's a little creepy. Yeah. You can't trust them? Yeah, you can't trust them. I like uh-huh. the ones that don't get caught. <laughs> That's true. He's a better businessman. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's some backstory. Okay. Well. Uh, in the book, Puzo explained... Well, first of all, I want to I want to indicate something really funny here. Uh-huh. Puzo describes Nazarene in the book. He says, quote, the baker, Nazarene, was pudgy and crusty as his great Italian loaves. <laughs> Pudgy good, and crusty. As his great Italian. That's a great description of a person. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Do you have any other? Uh, so he's a local businessman. Mm-hmm. Nazarene. Yeah. Uh-huh. He runs a bakery and his daughter, like you said, has fallen in love with this mm-hmm. uh, gentleman, Enzo. Uh, Puzo also write that uh, Nazarene was really worried because his daughter was getting older and Puzo wrote, quote, she was already plump, homely, and sprouting a faint mustache. Wow. She would never get a husband as handsome as Enzo, end quote. So do you think Enzo's endgame was to stay in America? It's not or clear. Or true love? Well, the, Puzo writes more about it. I think they, it seems like he, two young people falling in love. Puzo Aww. wrote, Nazarene had seen her, this is in the bakery, Nazarene had seen her, Brush her swelling. Now, I, you, you, you're going to need to take a cold shower after this. Oh, dear. Okay. And I feel a little weird reading this to you. You're my brother and all. I won't look at you while I'm reading this. Okay. okay. Nazarene had seen her brush her swelling buttocks against Enzo's front when he squeezed behind her. Whoa, to whoa, whoa. Slow down. Slow down. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> when he squeezed behind her to fill the counter baskets with hot loaves from the oven. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the young rascal's hot loaf would be in her oven. No, it doesn't say that. Nazarene thought lewdly if proper steps were not taken. Oh, dear. Yeah. So, His daughter he's talking about. Yeah. So I think he recognizes that A, that will one. That his well, daughter is, this is her best shot of getting a husband. Mm-hmm. He's catching a fish. Two, they really are in love. Three, he's worried that, oh, he's also worried that Enzo is going to impregnate her and then leave, then get expatriated, yeah, right. leaving her with a with his loaf in her <laughs> oven without a father. Yeah. You don't want to be a fatherless loaf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've all been there. <laughs> and also Nazarene's daughter threatens her father that dad i'm gonna go to italy if he doesn't stay because she's so in love okay so he's I was like oh my gosh all why these- is he so opposed to the union you think it sounds like it's a win-win-win situation she's a spinster anyway yeah like he gets a hard-working son-in-law to take over the family yeah business. I, think, I think it is a win-win-win but i guess he's just as a protective a father protective father he yeah. doesn't this whole arena of of Budding sexuality he's not used to dealing. He's used to dealing with, with hot cross buns. <laughs> uh, it, this whole scene is a very interesting it, it, uh, contrast to your friend Bonacera's uh, mm-hmm. scene. Yeah. Um, you'll notice they are doing a, in this scene, it's almost like they're showing the Don doing something that's like not criminal. Hmm. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like they're to contrast that other scene. Yeah, which was criminal, but also he made it clear that he wasn't bloodthirsty and you know wanted friendship more than anything else. So you're still getting a, vic- a vision of the Don as a very benevolent figure. Mm-hmm. You know, who wouldn't want to help a couple stay together and cut through some bureaucratic red tape? Yeah, you know? yeah. So uh, yeah, it is a, it is an interesting contrast. Yeah, he seems like a a nice guy in all these scenes. The Don, yeah, considering he's a crime lord. Yeah, um, Enzo. Enzo. We'll, we'll see later on in the mm-hmm, movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, also shows up in Godfather Trey. Yes. Uh, he bakes the cake that you see in the first scene of the movie, mm-hmm. Michael's big celebra- celebratory cake. Yeah. And he's so, not in two, correct? No, I don't yeah, think so. so. He's in one and three. Yeah. Interestingly, I don't know how many other people are in one and three. I think I always assume, well, uh, Gar- um, Andy Garcia's mother too is it? Oh, she is in three. Yeah, that's she's right. Two. I yeah, feel like Lucy. for the third one, they're just trying to get any actor yeah. who is still around they need and to connect was, them. and was willing to 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 be a part of it. And know? Enzo said, "Oh, I'm available, and maybe you can put in a good word with the <laughs> consulate, and I can oh. finally get my citizenship because I'm still in this PO, POW bakery <laughs> cooking hot cross buns." Well, see, I saw it the other way as Francis Ford Coppola as the Godfather, where he's like, "No, well, no, oh, you, like, you got to come to my crappy movie." <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, um, 
Uh, and yeah, and Enzo returns. The character Enzo returns also later in this movie. Yeah. A very key scene for his father. Mm-hmm. For for his father. For his father. <laughs> and you see Enzo standing in this scene that we're talking about now. He's standing behind Nazarene quietly right. in the back. Yeah, which I think. I don't know how frequently the favor is asked in the presence of the person who's going to benefit. Like Bonacera didn't bring his daughter there. That would have been an interesting scene. That would have been awkward. Yeah. Their jaw wired shut. Yeah. Although that would have been a great ploy on Bonacera's part. It's like, look, you can't deny, you can't deny my, (laughs) you can't deny my daughter justice. And she's in, speak to the dawn, my daughter. And she's like, <laughs> Jaws moving a little electronic uh, machine sounds. Uh, I think if it, if it's, I think if it gives you a better chance of mm-hmm. of uh, getting your your request granted, then you'll probably bring in the, the mm. person. Like if you thought, yeah. Maybe bringing in the daughter would have been too... Well, also, Enzo was probably... They're probably both there working for the wedding anyway. That's true, because they, so. they made the cake for the yeah. for Connie's wedding. So do you think that's why they're there? Did he did get a separate invitation? Hmm. And, and Enzo well, was his we plus know. one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's really, really plus two and a half with that loaf in her <laughs> oven. <laughs> Well, I yeah, they were definitely working the they're working the wedding, and as we learned, everyone at the wedding who's working knows the family and is in service to the family. So I think they were invited both as as friends and also I don't think he would have asked the Don for this favor if they hadn't been friends. In addition to just a baker making him the cake. So you think he has a seat at a, at a table? I think he does. In a place name piece, and he gets a gift bag and, and all the all the, <laughs> the usual stuff. Yeah. <laughs> what would the gift bags be? Uh coffee? Something with coffee? Yeah. Like maybe a uh filled with uh what is it? Keurig little cups. Oh yeah. <laughs> He's really hinting. He's like uh, <laughs> and he has well, a, what are you gonna do with that coffee, huh? Yeah. It's all personalized. <laughs> when you're sleepy, put this on. Invite your Don over for coffee. <laughs> when you're sleepy. <laughs> <laughs> Shows the Don's face. Uh, of course, I, on the package, he'd have to be wearing the tux and the cat. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I do, and so also... Mostly, plus, that would be expensive to get that logo. For the, <laughs> yeah. Even Don Corleone has to pay to use yeah. the, the logo well, Some the things even I can't do. <laughs> Paramount, they're squeezing me for everything I got. And they saved the horse for last. <laughs> I think they saved the horse for last, <laughs> meaning the horse that gets, uh, you know, cartoon. Spoiler alert. <laughs> uh, one other point about that. I do think... Uh, Nazarene has a seat at the wedding too because Don calls him friend. Oh, at the beginning true. of the scene. Yeah. I don't think he would have. Right. If yeah. This chump off the street is just coming and ask for a favor. Uh, I have some information about the actor who plays Nazarene. Mm, interesting. Uh, his name is Vito Scotti. Okay. His name was Vito Scotti. Mm-hmm. He uh, lived 1918 to 1996. Oh, say his his. 1918 to 1996. So, oh my goodness. Uh, was that 81? Yeah, but 1918. No, oh, that's really crazy. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's when, re- so he would have recognized the ragtime music. Oh, yeah. From, <laughs> you, well, that's from what was the movie again? Uh, uh, the Sting. The Sting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he has been in a ton of things. Really? We've seen him at least four times. Really? Without making the, he has 229 credits in his uh, IMDb page. He's been, wow. His last movie was Get Shorty. He frequently, okay. uh, on IMDb, well, he frequently plays waiters and, you know, and people like He's that. He's typecast but, as, a, as a servant in the service industry. Well, but also, according to IMDb, he played snobs, loudmouths, and bullies. What? Which is funny, considering what a mild, like, grateful character he yeah, is in this Yeah, seems way out of character. In this one, so... Um, yeah, he was in Golden Girls, Who's the Boss, Charles in Charge, uh, Fantasy Island. He was on Northern Exposure playing the Godfather. Playing the, the playing, character named the Godfather. Oh, that's funny. Do you think he got that role because of his role in the film? I can't help but think it would have tipped yeah. it over to his favor yeah. between him and some other. Uh, his mother did Italian theater, and that's what kind of got him into the acting bug. And I probably his greatest credit he is the most frequent guest star on Gilligan's Island. He was on four what? different times, oh four episodes gosh. of Gilligan's Island. 
I assume he playing different characters each time. Do you recall any particular character he was? One that I would remember? The only I should have looked it up, but the the only one I can think of is there was like a uh, Spanish dictator. Do you remember mm-hmm. that? Where oh, some banana republic mm-hmm. dictator he had Gilligan on like puppet strings. Ironically, also. oh, I do remember that <laughs> one. Yeah. Well, that would have been before this. So that would yeah, that's what gave him the I, that's what gave him the idea to be in to oh, put him in the Godfather. <laughs> remember that scene with the puppets? <laughs> Perfect. That's so his great. bookend, his career is like playing a, a puppeteer, puppet being the Godfather, and then playing a Godfather. Oh boy. So it really, uh, really covers the range that's of things. Awesome. So that's a. I mean, he was like working for fifty years before when he that's died. That's incredible. So is he uh, American? Uh it seems he he either was. I think he was born in America, but then went to Italy oh. like for a few years mm-hmm. and then came back when he was like still a young mm-hmm. person. I wonder what credits he has in Italy. I don't think he acted until oh, he until. No. Uh, yeah, he would have been. He just started acting like I think his first credit is 1949. So oh, he would have been 31 at that point. So imagine that you start working at age 31 and you still work for 50 years. Oh, boy, <laughs> that's a career. So when he went to Italy, do you think he was? Maybe in one of the, in World War One, I, I don't think the timeline matches up. Maybe taken POW, brought back to America, and so he really empathizes oh, with yeah, Enzo's irony. experience. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait a minute. He was oh, so he went back to Italy. And, oh, I thought you meant he was captured by the Italians in oh in no an Italian I mean, POW <laughs> camp. <laughs> yeah, that's when I fell in love with this woman. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's when I learned to be a baker. <laughs> yeah. So there you go, Vito Scotti. Probably yeah. the most uh, account, most credits of any actor in the film so far. Hmm. Yeah. We'll see. And if you're not paying close attention... I'm not. Uh, me neither. <laughs> you would think that Buonasera and Nazarene, they look very similar. If I yeah, just well, think scene, back, these right? two scenes really parallel each other yeah. in a lot of different ways. Yeah. Yeah, the mustaches. Nazarene is, is much better at... it. His approach is much better with the Don, though. Well, yeah, he clearly, they have a relationship. Mm-hmm. What can I do for you, my old friend? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So this is kind of showing you how Monastera should have approached, yeah. approached it. And on the way out, uh, Nazarene also reminds Don, he's like, oh, wait till you see the cake. It's oh, yeah, yeah. He, and he, uh, he really, he, 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 goes, he puts oh, an exclamation point on his, his yeah, gratitude right. service to the Don. And he still can't stop talking. Yeah. Even though yeah. Tom is <laughs> gently pushing him out the yeah. door. <laughs> have you ever had to do that, Alex? What? Push someone out the door? See, yeah, I just, wish, again, I wish I had usher someone. someone out the door because they just keep going yes. on and on and oh, on. Oh, yeah, like at a party and stuff like the lat, like, oh, yeah. People are lingering and but stuff. But you've, you've used your physical presence to, to send the message that they need to start moving? Well, it's like a boa constrictor. You. You just the way a boa constrictor works is it doesn't it doesn't crush you. Mm-hmm. What it does is every time you exhale, it just tightens a little bit, and so you can't inhale anymore. So you just so choke. Like, yeah, you, yeah. So you don't actually get crushed. You just choke. Yeah, you literally can't draw breath because it's pushing the, your lungs as <laughs> you A boa so. constrictor. Remind me not to ask you for a favor on your daughter's wedding day, okay? Uh, uh. So what I'll do is I'll use that technique where mm-hmm. if someone's like standing in the foyer, like if they take any step towards the door, then I move forward and that, thus it's harder for them to, I'm not like pushing so at, them. So at what point will you wrap your arms <laughs> around them and start when I'm hugging them choking goodbye? Them. <laughs> oh yeah. You just I, hold your arms there. I hug them and then I start moving while I'm <laughs> hugging them and then push them out the door. Yeah. You look and they crush still- you and swallow you and with <laughs> dislocate my jaw and swallow you. And they're still not getting it. Oh, yeah. you, don't forget the pretzel, big bowl of pretzels I bought yeah. and the champagne. It's yeah. delicious. That'll be the name of this episode, the boa constrictor method. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So and then the Don says, who's next on the list? Mm-hmm. So there you go. There is a list of people. Yeah. There is. To, so Don is aware that there's a list. Yeah. And uh, who is the next on the list? Do you know? Who's mm. the next? Uh, I don't know the order. I know in the book, and we've already talked about this in an earlier minute, there is an additional per- person who comes to ask the Don a favor. It's a man named Mr. Coppola who asked for money to start a pizzeria. We talked about this in an earlier oh, minute. Oh, okay. Yeah. And the Don oh, right. yeah, that was borrows really money weird. from Tom Hagen in the presence of this guy and then to lends him the money. His, yeah. uh, but so that's not in the movie, which makes sense that they cut it out. So this, So you're saying that would have been after this? Yeah, I don't recall the actual order of the three. Because peeking ahead, uh, Luke Abrazzi, Luke Abrazzi mm-hmm. is the next uh, 
the next person we see yeah. in the office. And but then after Lug is, is Lou Cabrazzi. I think they have the <laughs> They three. got swapped. <laughs> yeah, they got shuffled around because <laughs> of the name confusion. <laughs> Lug, my friend, how, how can I help you? So you think he like like the other Lou wanted like his house painted or something, and then so they painted Luca Brasi's house. Oh, there was definitely a yeah. mix up on the forms. <laughs> yeah. The guy's like, I want can... you to kill. He's like, I want you to uh, to kill my wife. <laughs> they wind up <laughs> yeah. killing uh, Luca Brasi's wife. Instead. I'll make it up to you. Yeah. Okay, you can take home some of this d- delicious wedding cake. <laughs> I thought he's gonna say like, I really, I want. Ch-. And this is gonna sound weird, but I really want to be choked. So like, just surprise me sometime and just just strangle me. Do it real. Don't don't kid around. I really want the real experience to see what it's like. Are you sure, my friend? <laughs> anyway, we'll save this for the loop. If I have you kill them, I won't be able to go visit. No, no, no for don't coffee. kill me. Just, oh, just, just want to choke right. a little bit. Yeah. Let me go. Boa constrictor style. Yeah. <laughs> Tom, who can we put on this boa constrictor job? We don't want someone who's going to get carried away. We want a reliable snake. <laughs> someone cold hearted. <laughs> Uh, well, that's all I have for minute 13. You got anything else? Well, there's a little bit more. There's a tiny bit more dialogue at the end. So, oh, okay. So Don says to Hagen, he says, um, oh, no, it's Hagen who asks him. It's like, who should I get? Oh, who right, should we get right. on this yeah, job? The whole, the whole Paisan thing. Yeah, and then the Godfather says, not, uh, it's hard to understand, but I looked in the script, it says, not our, pa- not our Paisan. Right. Give it to a Jew congressman. Um, Does it say a Jew congressman? That's what it says it? in the script. Maybe I have it wrong. Give it, the Jew congressman. It's probably give it to give it to the Jew congressman in, in another district. Is that right? I'm consulting my the script. <laughs> he says a Jew congressman. Oh, he does in another district. Yeah. Wow, that really suggests he has a lot of Congress people in his pocket. Yeah. Right? I mean, he has like like multiple so Nichols- Jewish congressmen at yeah. least. <laughs> so that's the even even in that subcategory, mm-hmm. he has many of them. Yeah, yeah, it's a real impressive line because this is the first time you really get the sense of how, like, he's not just a powerful criminal, but he has connections in the yeah. in the legit world. Too. Yeah, yeah, because this is a uh, political favor. He's got to go to yeah some like an official yeah. official political representative to give uh, Enzo legal status. Yeah, or to yeah grease the wheels yeah. to you know lose his application or something it's interesting he says not not to our paisan that's Mm -hmm. like not to our friend so i don't think they ever explain that is that that to me shows that they have one usual go-to guy for political favors no i just think he was just saying like not like a uh not one of the italians that they have that he has that owe him favors. Okay. Not this, it could be not a, an Italian politician. I'd be surprised if there were any Italian politicians. Uh, maybe on a local level or something. Or, maybe. Or whatever. Yeah. That's a good question. Yeah. Were there Italian uh, representation yeah. in the I mean, Well, well seemed, Oh, I'm know. sorry. This is the... Yeah, this is 1945. Yeah, Fiorello LaGuardia was the mayor of New York City. At that time? Well, in definitely yeah, yeah. around the FDR yeah. time. So there was definitely some... Well, especially in New York, cause there's mm-hmm. a lot of Italian... Uh, Maybe it was LaGuardia. Maybe it was a young Fiorello LaGuardia <laughs> who, who was. <laughs> oh, he, would have been, he would have been like a middle aged man by this. Uh, yeah. The, so, uh, but anyway, yeah. Um, it definitely establishes his his reach yeah. at that point. So, because not only does he have relationships, but apparently it's something where they just go to him and the guy will just be like, sure. Mm-hmm. Like, Don doesn't even have to go himself and yeah. ask. He just sends, you know, Tom to send someone to, you know, to do it. How do you think it works? Do you think it then Tom, <laughs> those clowns in Washington? That, do you think Hagen reaches out to this congressman and says, "Hey, we need this done." The congressman gets it done, and then is there a payment of some sort, an immediate payment, or is it just this kind no. of ongoing ebb of friendship? I'm sure whenever he's running for re-election, forth. the Don. Oh, that's when the Don gives hooks a, him you up. know, or, or any time mm-hmm. if he needs it, the Congress needs a favor, or like. You know, someone to be silenced. Someone to be silenced. Kind of dirty uh, business, having union problems. Right? You saw the Sopranos. Yeah. You, you know what? Or yeah. like, or like favors for other people. Yeah. Like someone in his district needs something mm-hmm. done, and he's like, "Okay, I'll take you know." Boy, it really is a good relationship to have an official political mainstream representative who is helping out an underground strongman. Because they, it's a mutually beneficial relationship. Because yeah, totally. he can have his dirty work done. 
but yet, and, and the the mob boss Don Corleone can have political favors done. So it's yeah. it's a great relationship. Yeah, it's like over. neither of them have to live in each other's worlds. They scratch each other's backs. Right. I guess it's always an uneasy thing, though, because you don't want the other person to betray you or like suddenly yeah. have something on you. Yeah. Have more power than you. I guess it's. I guess it's worse for the. I guess the power that the Don has is to reveal. Yeah, it would, certainly wouldn't hurt the yeah. Don if it was revealed that there was political favors, but it would wreck his. Presumably, all his all his people would run for cover. If they, yeah. if, uh, if they, uh, I guess it would be more. It's yeah, it's more risky to be the politician because he has. Yeah, it's easier for him to fall because everyone knows yeah. the crime boss is a crime boss. Yeah. Yet the politician, if he were betrayed, he can call. Uh, maybe he can't call in political favors to have the Don investigated more because already he's he has no political capital if it's exposed he's mixing with a crime boss yeah so interesting politics we'll see more we'll see more of them in godfather 2 and godfather 3 mm-hmm. <laughs> we're doing this for the rest of our lives don't you know yeah. that <laughs> every time every time you think you're out you get pulled back Pull in me right back in maybe that could be our new closing oh it could, it could be a good opening too it's, oh yeah, we'll see you. Yeah. Okay, so and so the episode ends. Oh, it ends with uh, the debut of Michael Corleone mm-hmm. and the, the lovely Kay arriving for the wedding, mm-hmm. and uh, we just see them walking in from the back. Michael's mm-hmm. wearing a military uniform. What a cr- military crime boss? What? Son, he, he's a soldier in his own family. How far does this guy's reach extend? Oh my gosh, he's got Marines <laughs> under his thumb. <laughs> he's got a Marine Corps. Marine Corps band. Um, so yeah, that's how it ends. Like, obviously, we'll learn much more about mm-hmm. uh, Michael and Kay. And no, Michael's my- not here now. We can finally make the picture. We can finally. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Michael's here. We can make the picture. The scene. The last few seconds of this minute uh, end with with Don Corleone peeking out the well, window, that's right. him which spying. is awesome. He's spying out the window. He just that's looks, right. and it reminds me of the earlier minute when Sonny was looking out the window. Oh yeah, Sonny was looking out the window because he. I'm guessing because he was, he felt he was missing what was happening at the wedding. He wanted to be out there, yeah, uh, probably looking at his girlfriend Lucy. Mm-hmm. And uh, here we have the Don looking at his son Michael, right? Who at this point we don't know what they're. We know the Don likes Michael, mm-hmm. but like we don't know generally what the status is. Yeah, over there. Although in the book you said he, it was established that he was frustrated with Michael for not mm-hmm. following in his footsteps. Yeah. I have one more note to add this minute. It is sure. a flashback, sort of. Flash, 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 flashback, flashback, sort of. Sort of. So I told you I got my hands on Coppola's notebook. Yeah. It's the original? It's, it's, it's bona fide. <laughs> and yeah, I called in a favor from this congressman, not our paisan, another oh, congressman. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, in the production, so I'm, I'm flashing back to Buenos Aires. I know you're sick of me going back to Buenos Aires. No, Sarah. I just know it's your thing. So in. In Coppola's production notes, he wrote, Bonacera, good scene. This is where Bonacera is, the opening scene. Good scene. We need a terrific actor for Bonacera. Nice. And I think they accomplished that. Just wanted to give a shout out to the actor. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I hope he's still listening. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I guess that wraps up Minute 13. Mm-hmm. We'll find out more about my, Kay and Michael next week. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the meantime, we're on Twitter at Godfather Minute. Go find us there. Follow us on Twitter. We're on Facebook, too. Mm-hmm. All that stuff. Mm-hmm. All the social media. And yeah, feel uh, free to drop us a line and oh, yeah, podcast, give us some feedback. Podcast if you have any, at Godfather Minute. Mm-hmm. If you have any questions, comments, let us know. We'll, we'll try to incorporate your, your comments into the podcast. Yeah, maybe if we get enough of them, we'll do a special show where we answer listener questions. Or should we just incorporate it into the regular show? I guess we'll just incorporate it into the regular show. Probably. So, like a letters page. Can you start? Yeah, a letters page. Dear Alex and Andy, I've been listening here to your podcast. and <laughs> Although by the time we, I think we're recording these far enough ahead where if you ask a question, it's going to be like three months before That's we get true, to yeah. <laughs> Try to anticipate <laughs> what we'll talk about. Maybe ask a question about minute 40. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's probably then, a good that's idea. A, not a bad idea. Yeah. And we do ask if you post a comment or question that you sign it with in the old school style, like um, like looking for favors in Minneapolis. Oh, or, like an alias? Yeah, but, okay. but, but something having to do with your question. Oh, okay, so okay, like, that's good. Yeah. Um, like they used to do in those Dear Abby columns. Yeah, totally. Right? 
You know what? I just realized we never rated this episode. We completely forgot to rate it. rank this minute. Um, I think there's a reason for that. I think this minute is kind of a low key minute compared mm-hmm. to the previous ones. Yeah. This scene is very, as we said, is very similar to the Bonacera scene and mm. other person petitioning. And for then something. Nazarene just kind of drones on and on. Uh, Even the Don what can I do for you, them. my friend? Yeah. Um, so I'm going to give this one three, man, three, uh, three wedding cakes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I give it three hot cross buns. <laughs> you do learn about the Don's political connections. So yeah. the, you, you learn that his, his reach is further than. Yeah, it's a little bit of new information, uh-huh. but it's, uh, mm-hmm. you know. How about how would you rate our assessment of the minute on a scale of one to five? I'm going to go ahead and give it a three. Yeah. I thought it was solid. Solid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Solid as a rock. Solid as a rock and. We could do better. We could do worse. Maybe we should take out us ranking our own thing. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Is it a little, a little arrogant or are you self-conscious about it? Maybe. Yeah. Well, I don't also I don't want to be like, oh, this episode was a, a one. The listener totally wasted <laughs> no. their time Sorry. listening to me drone on. <laughs> maybe so. we should maybe we should put the rating at the beginning so when people hear the oh, rating, yeah, if it's know. three or lower, yeah. they can be like, you know, and I'm just gonna skip to I that. move that we stop ranking our own performances. I second that. All right. So listeners, what do you think? And we can have the listeners rank it too. I'm sure they will anyway. Oh, those people are those so critical. listeners can't be pleased. They've been <laughs> online all day. My daughter's wedding asking me for favors. Every time I think I'm out, they pull me back, back in. in. On right. the Godfather, Godfather Minute. minute.